You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production in association with City News. If you own a car that was built here in Canada, it probably came from southern Ontario. For decades, the region has been the hub of the Canadian auto industry. Millions of vehicles, billions of dollars, and more importantly to Canadians, thousands and thousands of good jobs. But as the global push towards clean energy gathers uh, steam, it is electric and hybrid vehicles that are flying off the lots. If they aren't already spoken for before they ever hit the lot in the first place. This means that Canada has a problem at both ends of the chain. Right now in this country, electric vehicles are too scarce, too expensive, and the infrastructure built for them still too small for the consumers who desperately want to make the switch and a federal government that desperately wants to hit its targets. But at the same time, auto manufacturing in Canada is still largely built around traditional combustion engine cars, meaning that money and jobs are at stake as electric vehicles become more popular. Now that part is something that governments can act on right now. And they say that they are. Windsor has landed the biggest investment ever in Canadian auto industry, a $5 billion electric vehicle battery plant, which will employ thousands of workers in this region. Today's investment will secure 2,600 jobs for the workers here in Oshawa and to add a third shift at the plant. But what about the rest? The price, the charging stations, the incentives to buy, and everything else that might finally push electric vehicles past the tipping point in Canada. That stuff is going to be harder to fix. And we don't have a lot of time to make it happen. I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. This is The Big Story. Zoe Long is the research manager for Simon Fraser University's Sustainable Transportation Action Research Team, or START, to be simple. Hey, Zoe. Hi, thanks for having me. So as of now then, what percentage of new cars sold in Canada are zero emission or electric vehicles? In 2021, just under 6% of new vehicles sold across Canada were electric vehicles, but there is a lot of variation in those numbers across provinces, actually. So in British Columbia, electric vehicle sales were were 13% of new vehicle sales in 2021, and nearly 10% in Quebec, Hmm. compared to just 3% in Ontario and even less among the other provinces. So it's not really a surprise that we see that variation because in British Columbia and Quebec, there are much more policies in place to support electric vehicles. So that's why we see uh, such a variation or disparity among the provinces. And in a little bit, we'll get into the reasons for that. Um, But maybe just to provide the context, what's our government's stated goal for the future of electric vehicles? Yeah, so right now the federal government is is pushing hard to transition Canadians toward electric vehicles. Uh, the federal government recently announced its in its new emissions reduction plan new sales goals for electric vehicles, including basically a sales mandate requiring automakers to sell twenty um, percent of their sales as as electric vehicles by 2026, 60% of their sales as electric vehicles by 2030, and up to 100% uh, electric vehicle sales by 2035. So so those are the sales targets in this plan, but the plan also included complementary policies to support uh, the transition to electric vehicles, including billions of dollars in incentives to reduce the purchase price of electric vehicles for consumers and on nearly a billion dollars to support electric vehicle chargers and their infrastructure. Those are pretty lofty targets, especially considering that we're currently sitting at 6%. So before we get into how we can or can't make that happen, ultimately it's up to the consumer. So what do we know about how many Canadians are actually interested in buying, owning, driving uh, an electric vehicle? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. And it seems to be increasing over time. So my research finds that about a third of consumers say they're interested in buying an electric vehicle, which is much higher than the sales levels we see. But I suspect if we ask people today, given the soaring gas prices we've seen, we would see an even higher demand for electric vehicles. So that's a huge disparity then between uh, how many want to and how many actually do. What kind of barriers uh, do those people cite when you ask them, when when they say they'd love to drive an electric vehicle, um, you say, well, why aren't you? We find that there are three primary barriers that tend to stop buyers from purchasing an electric vehicle. The first barrier, and this is this is huge in Canada, is the issue of supply. There are simply not enough electric vehicles available in the country to satisfy demand. So the sheer quantity alone, and there are so also aren't enough of the right kind of electric vehicles. So most models in, of electric vehicles available today are on the smaller side, and the consumer market is more interested in larger vehicles like SUV and pickup trucks. So there aren't enough of the right kind or simply enough vehicles to satisfy the demand. Second important barrier to consider surrounds the idea of home recharging. So increasingly being able to charge your electric vehicle at home is seen basically as a prerequisite for purchase. It's very convenient and cheaper to charge a vehicle at home. And this isn't so much of a problem when you own your own home, particularly a detached home, but many prospective buyers don't have access to home recharging because they're renters. Right. They rely on street parking. They might own a condo or a townhouse that they don't have authority to install a charger in their parking spot. So as we are, you know, living through a housing affordability crisis, this will increasingly become a barrier stopping people from purchasing an electric vehicle. And the third barrier to consider is price still. Electric vehicles do cost more than their equivalent gas-powered vehicles. And this can result in a sticker shock at a dealership that can turn buyers away. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that electric vehicles are much cheaper to operate than gas-powered vehicles. Electricity is cheaper than gasoline. Electric vehicles have cheaper maintenance, maintenance costs. So uh, over the the lifetime of a vehicle, an electric vehicle might actually be cheaper, right. but some buyers don't have the cash or access to financing to be able to, to purchase an electric vehicle up front and see those savings over time. So let's dig into those and maybe start with scarcity. How difficult is it to find and test drive or purchase an electric vehicle in Canada, maybe compared to the way you would with a combustion engine. And I, I know there have been shortages of some of those too, particularly used cars, right? Yeah, that's right. And in Canada, it can be extremely difficult to even find an electric vehicle to test drive at a dealership on a lot. Recent studies have found that only around 50% of dealerships would even have an EV on their lot. And again, there is this variation among provinces as well. So you'll likely be have more luck in British Columbia or Quebec finding an electric vehicle compared to another province like Alberta or Manitoba. And that's just test driving. If you're lucky enough to find, you know, even one electric vehicle on a lot to test drive, that would be that would be a success. Mm. And for those who decide to place an order for a new electric vehicle, despite the challenges they might have faced in, in test driving, they're likely to wait several months as well before receiving their car. There's kind of a backlog in orders. And I've also heard anecdotally that there's a lot of competition for available electric vehicles and the competition can be vicious. I heard a story recently of someone who was lucky enough to test drive a Nissan Leaf. And when they got back to the dealership, they found that the car had already been sold sight unseen by a buyer. While they were test driving it. That's right. It seems impossible that we can get to 30% or 33%, 60%, 100% when uh, we can't even get people into cars to test drive them. Yeah, it's it's a big challenge right now, uh, and the government and, and industry will have to come together to alleviate those supply shortages if we are to meet those goals. 
Well, there have been reports recently, um, and you know, we're speaking to you from Ontario, that the government here wants to ramp up domestic production of electric vehicles in southwestern Ontario, traditionally like Canada's automaking heartland, right, to replace uh, the dwindling demand for combustion engines. Is that doable? Is that a pipe dream? How quickly can you transition uh, manufacturing from one type of vehicle to another? I think it is doable. And as you mentioned, we are seeing signs that the government and industry is working on it and they are putting money, big dollars into trying to make it happen. And I think there is good reason to be optimistic. So just in this March alone, there have been several huge announcements about new battery manufacturing that will take place in Canada. So last week, there was, frankly, a game-changing announcement that uh, a large automaker um, and a technology company in concert with the federal government, provincial government, and even regional governments in Ontario will be constructing a battery manufacturing plant in Windsor. And this represents one of the largest investments in Canada's auto sector in history. So it is quite a big deal. And there were two other big announcements earlier in March about battery component manufacturing plans that will happen in Quebec. So the region is attracting more investment, and this could be the beginning of building, uh, you know, an ecosystem for electric vehicle manufacturing and batteries here in Canada. And the reason this is really important is that electric vehicles and their batteries are really heavy and expensive to transport. Mm. So you want to build the electric vehicles close to the market that they will serve. So if we start building electric vehicles in Canada, that means that the electric vehicles are likely to stay here in Canada or at least in North America. And when we put in the policies that the government has recently announced that it will, that will ensure that a good proportion of those vehicles will stay here in Canada. So let's talk about what we'll be building then, uh, if all goes according to plan. You know, you mentioned there's a pretty big gulf between the type of electric vehicles that are available right now and and the type that consumers really want to buy. Um, is that changing? How does that change? Should it change? Yeah, I think that's a really important point to bring up. And I think there's two pieces that we should consider when answering that question. I think what you're getting at is vehicle style or class. So for the most part, as I mentioned, battery electric vehicles tend to be smaller, whereas 80% of consumers want an SUV or a pickup truck. And I think this is slowly changing because the new battery manufacturing plant in Windsor will produce batteries for uh, vehicles in brands like Jeep and Dodge, which make these larger vehicles. As we might get into later, the new policies that the government has announced will compel automakers to sell the types of electric vehicles that can, that suit consumer tastes, like SUVs and pickup trucks. And then the other piece that I wanted to bring up is the actual type of electric vehicle. There are two type main types of electric vehicles, pure battery electric vehicles, which only have a battery and can only be plugged in. And there are also plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, which have a, a small battery, smaller range, and also have an internal combustion engine. So my research finds that consumers are interested in both types of vehicles, but it seems like many automakers are are opting for the route of pure battery electric vehicles, likely because of improvements in battery technology have allowed for longer range EVs to become practical. But I think there is still a gap in meeting the demand for for plug-in hybrids, which might actually alleviate some anxiety of that buyers uh, might feel when thinking about switching to a pure battery electric vehicle. I want to poke a little bit at the types of vehicles that people want. We've had um, discussions about electric vehicles on this show in the past. And and one of the things that I learned is just how much more dangerous uh, large electric vehicles could be because, you know, as you mentioned, they're, the battery is heavier, the vehicles are heavier, and the acceleration can be so much faster. So Given that, it's kind of weird to hear that the government is pushing automakers to move in this direction on these types of vehicles. 
Yeah, I think that's a really interesting point to bring up. And I did hear the conversation you had previously about that. And I think it was it's worthwhile having the conversation. But the way I see it is I don't see this as a new phenomenon. We as a society have seemingly already decided that large vehicles, which are are known to be quite unsafe, Mm -hmm. uh, we've decided we're okay with foregoing safety by sizing up to SUVs and pickup trucks. Right. SUVs and and trucks already lead to more fatalities in collisions for pedestrians and cyclists, as well as for people in vehicles on, on the other end. So I don't really see this as an electric vehicle problem, but more of a, a vehicle problem and specifically an SUV or a truck problem. So it's, it's tricky. You know, people don't want to give up their SUVs and pickup trucks and people don't like being told what to do. We recently studied consumers' interests in SUVs specifically and found that SUV drivers really perceive their vehicles as superior and safer, and they they don't want to downsize or go to a smaller vehicle, and they don't want to support a government regulation that promotes the use of smaller vehicles. So it's tricky. And and just to reiterate, I, I don't see this as necessarily an electric vehicle problem, but more of just a vehicle problem. Right. And we might as well uh, try to help the climate crisis while we were going to be driving these vehicles anyway. That's right. What else keeps people from buying electric vehicles? You mentioned price. I want to ask you about infrastructure because we've mentioned charging stations a few times. Um, I'll give you a pure anecdote. I live in the east end of Toronto. This is like a pretty nice gentrified neighborhood. Um, Lots of homeowners, lots of detached homes. I think I know where like two charging stations are anywhere near me outside of like gas stations. And not that I can afford an electric vehicle, but if I could, that would worry me. And I'm living in the biggest city in Canada. What is the infrastructure like and how far do we have to go? Yeah, I think there is not as much publicly available infrastructure as many prospective buyers would like to see yet. It seems to me that there is somewhat of a a chicken and egg problem. So buyers don't want to purchase an electric vehicle until they see the infrastructure and infrastructure providers don't want to put in the infrastructure until they see an uptick in sales. But as I mentioned before, the idea of charging at home is going to become increasingly more important because most people who own an electric vehicle do most of their charging at home. Now, we will want to see more infrastructure across highways and gas stations, like you mentioned, to support longer distance travel, road trips, getting to places where you aren't at home. Yeah, And I think this will come. The government has announced billions of dollars in support for increasing access to this type of charging infrastructure. But it it doesn't happen overnight. It's it is a slow transition. So we'll just have to wait and see how how it unrolls, how it plays out. But to confirm your anecdote, you know, I I too um don't have a lot of public infrastructure for charging where I live. I'm a renter. I don't have an electric vehicle charger at my my rental place. So I couldn't charge an electric vehicle at home or in public either where I live. Okay, let's talk about the last barrier, um, which for many, many people might be the biggest one, which is simply price. Um, Are prices even coming down at this point as as EV use becomes more widespread, like dropping at all? Uh, And then maybe explain some of the incentives that are hopefully coming uh, ASAP to help with that. Yeah, so battery costs have been declining fast, faster than many people have ever predicted. That's why we're seeing electric vehicles with longer range becoming available and becoming available for similar price points to previous model with lower ranges. But outside of the the luxury vehicle market, we've seen a lot of electric vehicle models available for sale in Canada, conveniently priced at around the $38,000 to $40,000, $45,000 for the base model because that is the price in which they qualify for the federal government's purchase incentive, hmm. which is only available for vehicles priced at $45,000 or less typically, though there are some small exceptions for larger vehicles. So um, I think there's factors affecting the price beyond 
component battery cost supply shortages alone, including trying to sneak in those vehicles for, you know, as much as possible while still qualifying for the incentives. So it's tricky. I know the automakers and the dealerships um, play, you know, they have to come up with their own pricing models to make the vehicles profitable. Do we know anything about what's coming from the government that could specifically help uh, with that? Especially, I'm thinking, you know, eventually if these things are going to become cheap enough for us to afford, they're going to also have to offer incentives for under 45 grand. Mm -hmm. So the government recently uh, refilled their pot of incentives, and that's just for the federal government alone. Other provinces also have rebates or incentives, including in British Columbia and Quebec. I mentioned these are right. kind of the key provinces that seem to be supportive of electric vehicles. Ontario used to have incentives, though they were cancelled. So um, when you stack those incentives together, they can be they can be quite a lot. In in BC, you can get up to eight thousand dollars off, for example, when you combine the federal mm. and provincial incentives, which makes a difference to a lot of people. Now, I think that this idea of producing more batteries, more electric vehicles in general, will also help prices come down due to economies of scale. So you produce more and it costs less to produce a given unit. And having more competition among automakers to sell the electric vehicles, I think, will also lead to lower prices. 